Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to be building on what we did in section 8.1, Systems of Equations. Today we're going to be making our systems a little bit bigger. So instead of two equations and two variables, we're going to have three equations with three variables. The easiest type of 3 by 3 system that you will see is a triangular system. It gets its name because the first equation will have three variables, the second equation will have two, and the third will have one. So it makes this sort of triangular shape while we're looking at it. To solve a triangular system, we're just going to use substitution methods. And we're going to start with the simplest equation, the one that has the least amount of variables, and then work our way up. So we'll start with the bottom equation here. If I want to solve for z, I would just need to divide both sides by 4, which is going to give me z equals... 0.4. From there, I can plug that back in to the second equation. So I would have 2y plus 3 times 0.4 equals negative 0.6. 2y plus 1.2 equals negative 0.6. If I subtract 1.2 over, I'm going to have negative 1.8. And then if I divide by 2, y equals negative 0.9. So there's my z and my y, and now I can take both of those and plug them into the top equation to solve for x. So 5x plus 10 times negative 0.9 plus 10 times 0.4 gives me 0. Simplifying, I'll multiply here, I've got 10 times negative 0.9, that's just negative 9 and 10 times 0.4, which is just 4. Putting those together gives me a negative 5. Add 5 to the other side. Divide by 5. x equals 1. So my solution here is x is 1, y is negative 0.9, and z is 0.4. You may also want to write this as a three-dimensional point. Three-dimensional points instead of x and y just look like x, y, z. So here that would look like 1, negative 0.9 and 0.4. If you want to check your answers, just like in the last section, you can plug all three of these numbers back into the original equations and they should work in all of our equations. So what does this mean when we have three equations and three variables? Two equations and two variables are two lines that are intersecting. Three equations and three variables um, are planes that are intersecting. And we're still looking for the intersection of the planes in this case that will give me my solutions. So what we're going to do on the next three slides, you don't really need to put any of this in your notebook. We're just going to discuss the different things that can happen geometrically when you have three planes that are intersecting. So think of a plane like a piece of paper. And if we have three pieces of paper at different angles, kind of hanging out in space, um, there's six different possibilities. The first possibility is what you see um, on the top picture here. And I'll see if I can draw an arrow to it. There we go. Um, so this is the case where all three planes would intersect at a single point. So you could think of this almost like a three-dimensional plane, and in the center there is our origin, maybe. Um, the second possibility is all three planes will intersect on a single line. So if that happens, then we have infinitely many solutions because there are infinitely many points on that line. So any point on the line would be considered a solution. The third case is if the three planes are on top of each other. This is also infinitely many solutions, but this time anything that is on the plane, not just a single line, is considered a solution. The third or fourth, excuse me, possibility is if we have three parallel planes, so they're just right on top of each other, they kind of look like shelves. Um, that means they are not intersecting, so we say that there is no solution. Third um, possibility, well, actually no, fifth, Ooh, we're on a lot. Fifth possibility here is um, we have two planes that are parallel to each other. So if you're looking at this picture, the orange one and the yellow one are parallel. And then the third plane intersects both of them, and that's the green one there. You'll see that there are intersection places in this picture, but there's no place where all three planes are intersecting at the same place. So we say that there is no solution. And then finally, if our three planes make this kind of triangular shape, again, there's intersection points, but no place where all three intersect. 
So again, no solution. So if we think back to what we just saw here a second ago, there are six different possibilities and five of them are our special cases where you either have infinitely many solutions on a line or a plane or no solution at all, which is kind of interesting. Let's say we want to solve a system of equations that has three va uh, variables algebraically. Um, this is kind of a combination of our elimination and substitution methods that we learned in the last lesson. I'm going to go through the steps here first, and then we'll practice a couple of these today in our lesson. The first step is you start with all three of your equations, three variables. You want to make sure everything's lined up nicely like we had before. You want to pick two of the original equations and eliminate one of the variables. It doesn't matter which two equations you choose. It doesn't matter which variable you choose to eliminate. That will leave you with an equation that has two variables remaining, and we would call that equation number four. Then you're going to go back and repeat that step again. You're going to choose another pair of original equations, and this step you have to be careful. You don't have a choice. You have to eliminate the same variable again. So if in the first step you eliminated an x, the second step you also need to eliminate an x. That will again give you a new equation with two variables, and we're going to call that equation number five. Step three is we're going to pair up equation number four and equation number five. My four can show up. There we go. Together. Um, those will be two equations with the same two variables, and we can solve that system using the methods that we had back in section 8.1. Once you have a solution for one of the variables, either x, y, or z, you can then start using substitution like what we saw in our triangular system to solve for the remaining variables. So let's see what this looks like. Take a moment and write this down in your notebook. Okay, so let's go through this together. The first thing you probably want to do in these problems is number your equations. So I'm going to call this first guy equation number one, the second guy equation number two, and the third one equation number three. Um, this is just going to make it easier to follow along with your work as you're going through and things don't get messy because you're going to see there's going to be a lot of equations popping up as we go. The next thing you have to decide at the beginning is which variable you want to eliminate. So let's say I want to eliminate x's as I go through. So I'll just put a little asterisk by my x's. Step one says pick two of the original equations and get rid of a variable. So I'm going to start with equation one and equation three. But there's no rhyme or reason to that. You can pick it however you want. I'm going to go ahead and write my equations down. 3x plus 9y plus 5z is 14 and x plus 2y plus 2z equals 3. My x can show up better there. There we go. I want to eliminate x's, so we're going to use elimination. The easiest way to do that in this problem is multiply the bottom by negative 3. So that would give me a negative 3x, a negative 6y, a negative 6z, and a negative 9. Make sure you multiply it through the whole equation. Add your equations together. My x's will cancel. Y's will give me a 3y. Z's will give me a negative 1z. And then 14 and negative 9 gives me a 5 on the other side. This new equation we've created, we're going to call equation number 4. Now let's repeat that process again. We're going to go back to our original equations. This time I'm going to use equations 2 and 3. Again, you can pick any ones that you want except for 1 and 3 because we already, already used those. And we want to eliminate, again, the x's. That's the key here. You have to eliminate that same variable twice. So I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by negative 2. That's going to give me a negative 2x, a negative 4y, a negative 4z, and a negative 6. Add my equations together. This is going to give me equation number 5. X's cancel. I have a negative 3y a negative 3z, and then 9 negative 6 give me a 3. So now you'll notice I have two equations. 
that have the same two variables, equations 4 and 5. I'm going to go ahead and write those again down below. Equation 4, 3y minus c equals 5. And equation 5 is negative 3y minus 3z equals 3. I'm actually all set here to add my equations together because my y's are opposites. Y's cancel. I'll have a negative 4z, a positive 8, and if I divide, I'm going to get z is negative 2. Once you have that first answer, that's the majority of your work done. At this point, you're going to start plugging that in to your equations anywhere you like that would give you an additional solution. So if I know z, I can plug that into equation 4 or 5. Let's say I choose to use equation number 4 and z is negative 2. So that gives me 3y plus 2 is 5, 3y is 3, therefore y is 1. And then finally I'm going to need to go back to one of my original equations and solve for x. So let's say I use equation number 3, x plus 2 times y which is 1 plus 2 times z which is negative 2 equals 3 x plus, I'll have 2 and negative 4, which will give me a negative 2 altogether. And then if I move that negative 2 over, I'm going to get x is 5. So my final solution here is the three-dimensional point 5, 1, negative 2. If you want to check it, plug all three of those values into all three of the original equations and make sure it works. One more today in this lesson, and then we'll continue this tomorrow. Same thing. I'm going to go ahead and number my equations here. Equation number one, equation number two, and equation number three. I'm also going to choose which variable to eliminate. Here you'll notice there's already a z missing in the top equation. So if I choose to eliminate my z's, I'm actually going to save myself one of the steps in this process. Because remember, the goal is to get rid of variables to make it easier to solve. So if you pick the variable that has some pieces missing, you're going to save yourself a little bit of work. If I want to eliminate the z's, that means my only choices are equations 2 and 3. So let's write those down. x minus 3y plus 2z equals 1, and negative x plus 2y plus z equals 7. I want to eliminate my z's, which means I'm going to need to multiply that bottom equation by negative 2. If I distribute that in, I'll have a positive 2x, a negative 4y, a negative 2z, and a negative 14. Add my equations together. This is going to be equation number 4. 3x, negative 7y, z's cancel, negative 13. Now, because one of the z's was already missing in that first equation, we can skip step 2 in the process. I don't have to pair up another set of the original equations. We already have two equations with the same two variables. Equation number 4, 3x minus 7y equals negative 13. And equation number 1, 2x plus 5y equals 1. And now I can go ahead and solve that using elimination. I'm going to multiply the top equation by 5. And I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 7. So that's going to give me 15x, negative 35y, and negative 65 on top. On the bottom, I'm going to have a 14x, a 35y, and a 7. And I can go ahead and add those equations together. So that's going to give me a 29x. My y's cancel, and a negative 58. If I divide both sides, I'm going to get x equals negative 2. And there's my first solution. If I plug that back into equation number 1, two times negative 2 plus 5y equals 1. 
Then I have negative 4 plus 5y. If I add the 4 over, 5y equals 5, so y equals 1. There's my second solution. And finally, to get my last solution, I would have to plug x and y both into equation 2 or 3. Let's say I use equation number 2. Would work. So that would be x, negative 2, minus 3 times y is 1, plus 2z is 1. So that means I have negative 5 plus 2z is 1. Add the 5 over, 2z is 6, and that means z is 3. Final answer for this problem is negative 2, 1, and 3. We'll continue our 3x3 three three systems tomorrow.